What's up, y'all? So today we're going to go over the basic care requirements for New Caledonian geckos. And this is going to include the care for crested geckos, gargoyle geckos, and the little bit less commonly found Saracenorum gecko. <laughs> So to start off, we're going to talk about housing. Now obviously your animal is going to need somewhere to call home and this video is more so going to be the cheap way to house a gecko. Uh, we're not going to go into naturalistic terrariums or anything like that. We're going to be talking how to set them up for as cheap as possible but keeping them just as comfortable as they would be in a naturalistic terrarium. So here I have four different sizes of Sterilite gasket boxes and then one just shoe box size one. And basically these are the different sizes for the different life stages that your Crested Gecko is going to go through. So here we have a 54 quart box and this is what I would use for one to two adults if I was breeding them uh, or perhaps two females if you would like to have two together but I always recommend keeping them singly um, unless you're planning on breeding them because they do tend to fight a little bit regardless of what you have. Uh, so that's going to be for full adults. Now the next size down is going to be this one which is a 34 cord box. Now this is a good size for a sub adult and that just means that it's almost the size of an adult, but not quite there yet. And then right here, we have a 20 quart box. And this I like to use for my juvenile geckos. And it works really good up until uh, they look like they're getting a little bit cramped in this. And then I'll put them in this one. And then for hatchlings, uh, we're going to talk about a six quart box is going to be the best size that you can put them in. And the reason that you don't want to start out your gecko, especially if it's a hatchling right off the bat in a big 54 quart box, and you can go bigger if you would like to for an adult, uh, and that's because they have a little bit of trouble finding their food if they're in such a big enclosure, uh, because they could be at this end and then their food could be at the other end. and Looking at it from you, that's not very far, but for that little gecko, it's a big enclosure and they might just have a little bit of trouble finding their food. So I've brought my 20 quart container to the side to show exactly how I turn just a regular old Sterilite bin into a suitable enclosure for your new gecko. Now, what I've done is taken a soldering iron, which gets very hot and will easily melt through plastic. And then I go around the top edge of the container and I'll place holes all in there for ventilation. Oh, and as a side note, you definitely don't want to burn plastic inside. If you're going to cut the holes in with a soldering iron like I have, please take it outside in a well ventilated area to do so. And then in the back, I've placed a lot more holes um, just to give some added airflow. And then I'll also take the same soldering iron and cut out a couple windows. I just do two. Uh, you can do more if it's a little bit more humid in your house. But since it's dry in mine, I like to do two because it gives just enough ventilation to allow humidity to stay in the enclosure but dry out periodically. And we'll talk more about that in a couple minutes. Now, after I've cut out the bigger windows, I will take some window screen, which you can get in a really big roll for pretty cheap. I don't think more than like 20 bucks it would cost, um, but probably less. And you'll cut it to size, however big you made your window. 
and then I'll take a hot glue gun and glue it in place. And I'll tilt it over, open it up to show y'all what that would look like from the inside. So like I said, I just cut the window out and then I put this screen right over top and then just glue it in place and make sure it's secure. So now we have to talk about substrate and a simpler word to use for that is just bedding. It means the same thing, but us in the terrarium hobby refer to it as a substrate. So to keep it simple, I just use paper towels. Um, I like to get a little bit nicer brand of paper towels that are a little bit thicker, um, something that's gonna hold up for a little bit longer. That way they last a little bit longer in the terrarium and I can get more use out of them. But really any paper towels will work. And what you'll do, take a few squares and just line the bottom of your new enclosure with paper towels to cover the entire bottom. Once you've done so, it's just gonna look like that on the inside. Just paper towels on the bottom, nothing crazy here. And what that's going to do is hold enough moisture when you spray down the cage to keep the humidity up to the desired level, but it's also going to make it a lot easier to clean your cage out when it comes time, because these geckos are going to be defecating all over the ground. And if you have paper towels in there, you can just grab them up, throw them away, and then do what you just saw me do again, and you're good to go. Now we're going to talk about cage furnishings. I like to use a couple different materials, but if you think of something else that you can use that's not gonna to be toxic to the animal for the same basic effect, then you can feel free to do that too. This is just what I do. This is how I set up my geckos and they've always done great on this setup. So first right here, I have some tube insulation and this stuff as well, just like the window screen is very cheap. You can find it at home improvement stores and stuff like that. And it's just tubes of foam and it comes in a really long tube. And I'll just cut it to size so that I'm able to place it in the cage and it'll press up against the walls and allow for a safe place that the geckos can climb around in to use that vertical space that these arboreal animals will want to use. So it'll look something like this. I've already cut these to size, and then I can place them wherever I would like in the cage. And now we have two perches that these geckos are going to be able to climb on. And they really do use them a lot. Now, I also have these hanging plants these are ExoTerra brand, but you can use any brand uh, fake plant that you would like from a reptile company. Uh, you can also find really cheap fake foliage at places like Walmart. Uh, if you do get a non-animal brand fake plant, then I do recommend that you make sure that there's no kind of scent or anything on it, that it's just plain fake plants because that could harm or kill your animal and you don't want that. But I like these ones from ExoTerra because they come with a little suction cup on the back and that allows me to do this. You can place it inside the cage. And then suction cup it right on the back and these geckos really love to hide up in the back area behind these plants because it makes them feel secure. So we got that in there. Now, the last thing that I have for cage furnishings is this paper towel roll, which is a very simple thing to collect. I'm sure that you have paper towels at your house. And I'll just perch this somewhere in the cage like this. And it allows for a kind of tree hollow effect where the gecko can go inside and hide and feel secure. You really just want to have as many options available to your gecko to go in the cage and hide so that they aren't getting stressed out. I'll just throw this last fake plant up here on the edge in the 
front and you can really, it doesn't have to look exactly like my setup. It can look however you want it to look. Sometimes it sticks a little bit better if you missed it down first. Um, but just so you have a lot of areas for these geckos to climb, they are arboreal, which means that they prefer to climb around instead of being terrestrial, which would mean that they would uh, only use the ground space. They're climbing species, so give them things to climb on. So feeding, what are we going to feed our new Caledonian geckos? Now these geckos are frugivores, which means that they eat a lot of fruit in their diet along with the insects that they also consume in the wild for protein. So there's actually a lot of brands of pre-made diets for these geckos that come from New Caledonia already made that you can easily get your hands on from like places like Amazon and other dealers of such supplies online if you type it into Google. And basically what I have here are the two most popular brands. This is Pangea Gecko Diet and this is Repashi Superfoods Gecko Diet. And both of them will work perfectly for your geckos. Basically all you do with this is open it up You'll see that it's like a powder in there and you'll pour a little bit out into a dish or something to mix it into and then you'll mix it with water until it becomes a baby food or applesauce type consistency. And if you add a little bit too much water, don't worry, just add a little bit more food and it'll thicken right up for you. And vice versa, if you add a little bit too much food then just add a little bit more water and then it'll get the right consistency doesn't have to be anything exact just so that they're able to lap it up out of the container you give it to them in and i like to feed this to the geckos every two nights so i'll put it in one night leave it in the cage the next night and then take it out and replace it now Really, I just like to use a Gatorade cap full of the food for a adult, and then for anything less, I like to use a water bottle cap. Now, if you notice that your gecko is clearing out their food completely every night, you're gonna wanna give them a little bit more. And then you'll notice when there's a few scraps left, that's about the perfect amount of food to give them. But it's just trial and error for each gecko that you have. Now, that being said, those are meal replacement powders, and I do believe that they, they really are all the geckos require, but I've bred these geckos in the past many, many times and had over probably 100 babies that I've hatched out and sold at this point, and they really grow at literally like double the rate if you feed them insects. So suitable insects for these geckos are gonna be things like dubia roaches, which I have a few in this ceramic dish here. And you can get the nymphs, which are those that don't have their wings yet, because the adults are gonna be a little bit too big, um, unless you have a really big gecko. Um, and then you can also feed crickets, mealworms, and superworms. And basically all I do for feeding insects is I'll put them in a ceramic dish where you can get any kind of little glass or ceramic dish that the insects aren't really able to get out of. And when I feed them to the geckos, I'll place those in. And then I'll take a little bit of reptile calcium and throw it in the dish with them. And this is important because it gives your animal the calcium that they need. Um, so basically you're going to do that and then you're just gonna shake it around basically like you're seasoning some french fries or something but it's french fries for your gecko if you will and then I'll just take this and place it in the cage for my gecko to enjoy and I really like to feed insects to crusty geckos, gargoyle geckos and sarasinorum geckos like once a week or so is okay um, like we said, this is a meal replacement powder, so as long as they're getting this every two nights or so, then they're not going to need the insects, but it really does help them grow faster because they're getting that extra protein. So if you get something like a hatchling gecko and you really want to see it grow fast, feed insects. Temperature and humidity requirements for these guys. Now, for temperature, 
You're going to want to keep these at anywhere from 68 to 78 degrees Fahrenheit or about 20 to 25 degrees Celsius. Now it can get a little bit cooler than the bottom temperature there at nighttime, but you don't want it to drop too low for too long. Now you may be thinking to yourself, well, that's basically just room temperature and it is. So if your house stays at that temperature, which most people's houses do, then you don't need to add any extra type of heat source to these geckos, which I think is great because most reptiles need some kind of heat lamp or heat pad. That stuff can get expensive, but if you have a house that stays in between that range, they're gonna be good to go without any extra heat source. Now, if your house doesn't stay at that temperature and it's a little bit too cold, you're going to want to put a heat pad on the side of your cage that you've made here and you can buy a reptile heat pad that you'll basically just stick onto the side and that will give your animals a temperature gradient where one side of the cage is a little warmer and the other side is a little bit cooler so that they're able to effectively regulate their own temperature in their cage. Now for humidity, you're going to want to keep the cage moist some of the time, but dry at other times. Now this is a requirement that's a little bit different than most other reptiles and amphibians that like high humidity. So crested geckos really benefit from a dry out period during the day. So what I like to do is take a spray bottle or I have my industrial size like plant sprayer here that I got off of Amazon for pretty cheap. And this thing's great because it holds water for a really long time and it's pressurized. So you'll just take this pump here and pump it up. And then you're able to take this little spray nozzle here and spray down your cage without having to squeeze a bottle a million times. And if you have over 50 geckos like I have at one point, then doing that for 50 cages a night really gets old. So just being able to squeeze and go is really the best option. Now, if you just keep one gecko or a couple geckos, then you can really just have like a spray bottle like I was saying, cause it's gonna be probably a lot cheaper than getting this. But if you have a lot, I really recommend getting one of these. Now, to achieve this humidity and dry out period, I like to spray down the cage at nighttime, completely down. So I'll show you what that'll look like. So that's about good. You want to make sure the paper towels are soaked, but you don't want to make sure that they're like dripping off water and there's pooling at the bottom of the cage. You don't want that. And basically with the ventilation that I've put in this cage, this is going to dry out by the middle to the end of the day, the next day. And that's exactly what you're going to want for these geckos. So you're going to want it to be about 50 to 80% relative humidity after you spray. And then you want it to dry out quite a bit before the next time you spray. So that's where I was saying when you make the holes in the side of the container and the window vents, you just want it so that it's going to achieve that dry out period. And it's really not rocket science. Um, if you basically do what I did on this bin, uh, and I've done the same hole and window vents uh, scheme on all sizes of enclosures I use. You're basically going to follow that same hole scheme and window scheme and you'll probably achieve a similar dry out period which your geckos are going to really benefit from. So this here in my right hand is a crested gecko. As you can see it has the spiny crest that gives it its name. And here is a gargoyle gecko. And this gargoyle gecko and this crested gecko are about the size that I would put in a 20 quart. And maybe the crested gecko, since it's a little bigger, I would put in the 34 or 36 quart size container. But they're not quite big enough yet to go into that 54 quart. 
And like we said, the reason for that is it's just gonna be a lot easier for them to find their food if they're in a smaller enclosure when they're smaller. Well, I just wanted to thank you all for watching. And if you have any questions about anything that I've presented, please comment down below and I'll try to respond. Please stay tuned. I'll be posting more content like this. I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe, like this video, and comment anything down below.